today I'm going to do the project on the forms module. It's right after the HTML forms quiz. So let's begin. Form a story. Forms are great for collecting information on users like a job application or insightful surveys. However, we can also stretch our creative muscles and have a little fun with forms. For this project, we'll use our knowledge on the HTML form and grab user input to put a spin on a classic story. The logic for parsing and inserting of user inputs is already taken care of in main.js using JavaScript. We have also added some styling to the page in style.css. You can find these files by clicking on the folder icon located at the top of the code editor and selecting the files you're interested in. What you have to do is now make a form capable of collecting the correct information so that the newly crafted story makes sense. Note, save your code as follow the steps to see your progress. If you get stuck during this project, check out the project walkthrough video which can be found in the help menu. So if you're stuck, you can just click on get unstuck and they have a video with an experienced web developer solving the exercise. Adding the form. Number one, we'll be collecting information from our users using a form. So first we have to add a form under the HR element inside the body of index.html. So we're going to come here underneath HR where it says add your form below and add the form tag and it's inside the body. Number two, assign the form an action of story.html and a method of get. We will be sending information from our form to story.html using the get request. Assign the action and method attribute inside the opening form tag. So we're going to come here and add action equals story.html and method of get. Number three, in the form, create a submit button by adding an input with a type of submit. Assign the value of form my story. Save your code to see the button rendered. This might seem counterintuitive, but by creating the submit button and submitting the form as you add more code, you can see how the final result of the story and debugging in smaller chunks. Check the hint for more debugging tips. As you add more code to create new input fields, the submit button should be kept at the bottom. This formatting won't affect how the form submission process, but makes sense from a design standpoint. Users will submit the form at the end when they're done filling out the form. As you create more input fields, make sure that you've included the name attributes in which in each element that takes user input and the value of the name is correctly written as stated in the instructions. If you see no show up in story, it could be that you omitted the name. To see which input is related to the text, hover your cursor over the bold and underlined word to see the ID of the input. Then check the input has the necessary attributes. Okay, so we're going to add input in the form. Input is a self-closing tag. And we're going to add type submit value form my story. Adding text input. Number four, now we can populate our form with input elements that allow users to type in their responses. We also want to have associated labels with this input element so users know what they're filling in. Add a label element and assign the for attribute a value of animal1. Have the label render the text animal on the web page. Write your code so that the submit button always shows up at the bottom of the form. As you add more code, the submit button should be kept at the bottom. So we're going to keep this at the bottom and just add everything else above it. And if we save, we already have our submit button of for my story. Let's add a label element and assign the for attribute value of animal slash one. Have the label render the text animal on the web page. Okay, so label animal slash one. Have rendered the text 
animal and we need to close the label type. Let's save. Next. Now that we can create an input to associate our labels element with, set the ID of the input to animal1 and the type to text. Assign the name to animal1. Remember the name attribute is needed for information from this input to be sent from the form during submission. Speaking of submission, since we want our users to put in some value, add the required attribute to the input. So we're going to create an input to associate our label with the ID of animal1 type of text and name of animal1. And we're going to add the required attribute to the input. This is done. Number six, we're going to be adding more labels and inputs, so we should add some spacing. Below the input element, add a line break using BR. With the first input field and working submit button, type some text into the fields and submit it. Remember, in order for you to see the new code render on the browser, you're going to need to save your code. Number seven, our story has quite few blanks, so we're going to need a lot more labels and inputs. Add another label with a for attribute of animal2 and renders another animal to the web page. Underneath the label, create a new input with the attributes ID and name, set animal2, type, text, required, and add another break for a line break. So we're going to add another label for animal2. And I'm going to create an ID for animal2, test type, type to text, and name animal2. And we're going to add a break. Number eight, there's another animal in our story. So let's add another label with a four attribute of animal3 that renders one more animal to the web page. Then add a new input with the attributes ID name set to animal3 types text required. Let's save. And here we need to change to another animal and one more animal. So number two, another animal. Number three, one more animal. Number nine, let's have our users provide an adjective. Add another label with a for attribute of adjective 1 and renders the text adjective past tense to the web page. Then add a simple input with the attributes adjective 1, type to text, required. Label attribute of adjective 1 to change the ID and the name that renders adjective past tense, and save. Number 10, let's get a verb. Create a label that has a for attribute set to verb 1 that renders the text verb and an ing label and input to verb 1. Eleven, we have some input set up that accept tests, but we can use some input with different types in our form. Let's add a field that will accept a number. So label with the for attribute of number one. That renders the text number. And the type attribute, it's going to change from text to number. One of our blanks requires a yes or no answer. It sounds like we can use some radio buttons for that. Before we can add the radio buttons, add a span element that has a text yes or no. 
So we're just going to add a span element, opening and closing tag, and we're going to write yes or no. For radio buttons, we want to add the input before the label to render the radio button on the left of the text. Add an input element with the following attributes. ID set to yes, type the value radio, name of answer a value of yes, and the required attribute. Under the input, add a label with a for attribute assigned a value of yes that renders a text yes on the web page. So we're going to add input before the label this time and we're going to add id yes type radio name answer value yes and the required attribute under the input add a label with the for attribute assign a value of yes that renders the text yes on the web page. For yes, render the text yes. We should now add a radio button that represents the no choice. Add another input element that has the following attributes. I did set to no type with a value of radio, name of answer, value of no. So we're just going to do the same thing we did for yes. We're going to do the same thing, just change to no. The story that we're creating this form for involves some sort of speed. So Let's give our users a drop down list of speed options. Create a label and set the for attribute to speed. The label should render the text relative speed and in ER. Then add a select element with an ID and name of speed. Add the required attribute to make this field mandatory. Insert a break after the closing select tag. The select element will be empty for now. So let's create a label and set for attribute to speed. And the label should render the text relative speed and an ER. Then a select element with an ID and name of speed. Close the required attribute. We need to add a break after no. Inside the select, add a few options for users to choose from. One example of an option you could include is option value faster, the text faster. Add as many or as few as you like. Remember to assign a value and include text between the opening and closing option text. The text within an option element is displayed to the user. When the form is submitted, the value of the value attribute is sent along with the name of the select element as a key value pair. Your code might look like label for speed, choose a speed, you have that, select ID and name speed required. Then inside the select, we're going to add option. So here it asks to add option value faster with the text faster let's just do also slower let's also add super fast and here are the options slower faster super fast one of our stories blank required a code we could provide our users with a few options but also give them the choice of adding their own custom code to do this we can use the data list element. To set up a data list, we need an accompanying label and input. Under the last break, add a label with a for attribute of code. Have the label render the text motivational quote. Label for quote, text of motivational quote. Then input ID, 
type name required, ID of quote, type of text, name, name of quote, name required. We should add to the data list now under the input element, assign the data list an ID of quote choices, add a break after choosing data list tag. So right after input, we're going to add data list tag, ID, quote, choices. Let's add a few options with values within the data list element. For example, option value winner gets ice cream. You may add as many other field quotes you would like to our data list. Let's add one more here. So losers pay for ice cream. You may add as many or as few quotes as you would like. For a data list, you do not have to add text within the option element since the text will show up twice when rendered. Every good story has a key takeaway, so let's finish off this form by having our users provide this message. Add a label that has a four attribute of message. Have a label render meaningful message on the web page. Under the label, add a text area that has an ID and the name of message. Make the text area a required field. The text area should have eight rows and 40 columns. Check the hint for a syntax reminder, then add a line break after the text area element. The syntax for text area element. Text area, ID, name, rows, columns, text area. So label for messages, meaningful message. Text area has an ID of name and name of message. And we're going to do eight rows and 40 columns. Last one, fantastic job creating a form to fill in a story. If you want to challenge yourself, add a pre-selected value for each input field. Add placeholder text that contains examples for users. Add some extra validation like minimum length and pattern to elements that accept user input. And you can add pre-select values, uh, placeholder, mean, minimum, and length, and, or patterns. So let's test the form. Animal dog, another animal cat, one more animal frog. Say here concern. Singing, number 10, yes. Faster. Winner gets ice cream. Meaningful message. Life is beautiful. Okay, so it worked. The dog and the cat. A dog was making fun of the cat one day for being so slow. Do you ever get anywhere? He asked with a mocking laugh. Yes, replied the cat. And when I get faster than you think, you run a race and prove it. The dog was was much concerned at the idea of running a race with the cat, but for the fun of the thing, he agreed. So the frog who had consented to act as judge marked the distance, yelled, Winner gets ice cream. The dog was soon far out of sight, and to make the cat feel very deeply how ridiculous it was for him to try a race with the dog, he went off the course to practice singing for 10 hours until the cat should catch up. The cat, meanwhile, kept going slowly but steady. And after a time passed, the place where the dog was singing, the dog was so caught up in singing. And when at last he did stop, the cat was near to go. The frog now ran his swiftest, but he could not overtake the cat in time. More of the story, life is beautiful.